are listening to episode 10 of This or More, a podcast by yours truly, Tiffany Napper. So when I say to you, it's time to raise your prices, how does that make you feel? And if the answer is anything other than absolutely freaking magical, then this episode is for you. Now, let me be very clear. Not everyone listening right now will need to raise their prices. If, for example, you've never sold the thing at the current price, it might not be time to raise your prices. If, for example, you're offering something brand new with no proof of concept, no positive reviews, it's not time to raise your prices. But if you've been offering that thing for a while, you have experience under your belt, impressive case studies, glowing testimonials, great. That means it's time to review your pricing. And here's what else I want you to know before we dive deeper into this topic about raising your pricing. Your pricing should be based on your results. Full stop. Always, always, always price your offering at a level where you know with 100% certainty that your client's results outvalue what they just paid you. In other words, the results will surpass their investment. Now look, that doesn't always mean money to money. There are different value points in the world, right? Time is money. We know that phrase. So if you give them something, they pay you for something and it saves them a bunch of time, does the amount of time they saved outvalue the investment they gave you? There's a little bit of gray area here. You know, though, you know what's right and what's wrong. So I'm trusting you to use your moral compass here when we have this entire discussion today about raising your prices. But your pricing should always be based on your results. This is why you'll charge less in year one, then you charge in year five, and then you charge in year 10. Because without proven results, it's hard to instill confidence in the buyer that it's worth that price tag. Now, here are a few excuses you might make to justify not raising your prices. (laughs) You might say to yourself, I just want to do good in the world. I offer a spiritual or holistic service and I don't want to ask for money for that. I feel bad asking for money for that. I've heard that before. Or you might say to yourself, I don't want people to have to pay a lot for that service. I want to be affordable for everyone and all. I've definitely heard that before. I've felt that before. Or you might say to yourself, I don't think my audience can afford anything more than what they're paying. I can't even get a lot of people to sign up at this price point. I can't possibly go up in price. I've heard that before. So if any of those excuses start going through your mind, I want you to just become aware and stop for just a moment because all of those are, sorry to say it, excuses. Now, in today's episode, I'm going to share with you a lot of strategy, how to know when it's time to raise your prices, how much to raise your prices, how to tell your old clients about your new prices, how to tell new clients about your new prices. We're going to dig into all of that. I'm going to even give you a template that helps you rip the Band-Aid off when you're telling them. But before I do any of that, I would be remiss not to mention that we all come to the table with a subconscious belief around our value and our worth. Some of us were told things as children that impacted our self-worth. Some of us were told things by previous interested parties, customers, clients, potential customers and clients who chose to go with another provider or who, who flat out told us our rates were too high. And that's our true lived experience, right? But know this, your lived experience is real, but it's not our truth. Those are two very different things. And the terms real and truth are related, but they have very distinctive meanings. So let's dive in for just a second. Real. Real refers to that which exists objectively, independently. It happened. That's why I say that's your real lived truth. If someone told you that, that's real. But truth refers to the state or quality of being in accordance with the fact of reality. It is the conformity of a statement, belief, or proposition to objective reality. It is often associated with propositions or statements. And when a statement corresponds to what is actually the case, it is considered true. Okay. So do we believe when someone said to you, your rates are too high, do we believe that to be true? No. 
So remember, your lived experience is real, but it's not our truth. So now that we know that our previous reality is not our truth, aside from our self-worth meter, there are other things we need to take into consideration when we're diving into the topic of raising our prices. For example, market demands. Okay, if the market's not demanding what you're selling, it's going to be hard to raise your prices. Uh, Quality of your offering. If your quality of your offering is not impeccable, it might be hard to raise your pricing. Uniqueness of your offering or your moral compass. Does it feel good to you to raise your price to this level? Good is different from does it feel okay? You know, might feel a little uncomfortable, but does it feel morally good? In your inherent soul, do you feel okay charging that amount? And then, of course, consistent results. Are you getting consistent results that would validate you charging that? So grab your magnifying glass because that last one is the one that we're really going to zoom in on. Consistent results. So how do you know when it's time to raise your prices? Once your results are no longer a (laughs) crapshoot and you know without a shadow of a doubt that they will get back what they invest in more or that they will get the results you promised and more, then it's time to raise your rates. Simple as that. So if you had 20 happy clients last year and you were charging $5,000 per offering and they were all successful, happy clients, it's time to raise your rates. If you had five happy clients last year and you were charging $20,000 per offering, it's time to raise your rates. If you had 300 happy clients last year and you were charging $1,000 per offering, it could be time to raise your rates. Notice I said could be, because here's a little disclaimer. If you have an offering that easily convinces 300 people to give you $1,000 and that feels good to you, it's scalable, you can continue to take on 350, 400, 500, then you might not need to raise your rate. You might have reached a sweet spot, meaning you found it very easy to convince 300 people to give you $1,000. Let's keep doing that. There's no need necessarily to go up to 1,100 or 1,200 or 1,500 if it might have a negative impact on how many people we can serve, okay? But more than likely, If you're offering a hands-on service that's trading your time for money, which is a lot of my creative entrepreneurs out there, graphic designers, publicists, social media managers, I even have bookkeepers, interior designers, wedding planners, right? Time for money. You can't scale to 300 happy clients without burning out. And if that's the case, then you're going to want to consider raising your prices. It's the easiest way to increase your revenue and your profit next year without sacrificing your mental health, well-being, time with your family, all of those things. So let me do that again with even more clarity. Let's go through how to know when it's time to raise your rates. If you served 20 clients last year and you made $100,000 because you say you charged $5,000 per client, but you can't possibly fathom helping 21 clients or 25 clients without burning out or working extra hours, and you've proven your offer because you've got those 20 happy clients, it's time to raise your rates. If you had five happy clients last year and you were charging $20,000 per offering and you don't want to work with more than five clients per year, but you want to increase your income, it's time to raise your rates. If you had 300 happy clients last year and you were charging them $1,000 per offering and you could easily serve 350, 400, 500 people this year, you don't need to change a thing. Just keep sharing your glowing testimonials with the world so you can help more people and make more money. Okay, so now that we're clear on how to know when it's time to raise your rates, the next question you might be asking is, when do I raise them? When do I raise my rates, Tiffany? Here's my answer. As soon as you feel confident that anyone who books your services will get the outcome you promised if both parties hold up their end of the bargain. So if you're a website designer, but the client doesn't provide the copy you've requested and that impacts your design timeline, that doesn't count. If you're a coach and the client doesn't do the work you asked them to do, then that doesn't count. If you're a dietitian and the client doesn't follow the protocol you outlined to heal their symptoms, that doesn't count. But 
If you do the thing you promised and the client holds up their end of the bargain and the results are what you promised, now's the time to raise your rates. If you're confident anyone who books your services will get the outcome you promised and you have the past results to back that claim up, raise your rates today, not tomorrow, not in three months, today, now. Don't wait until you're fully booked. Don't wait until you've hit 100K or some other made up benchmark milestone. And certainly don't wait until you feel ready. The truth is you might never feel ready. This is a rip off the band-aid sort of moment. Time after time when I've needed to raise my rates, it's been my coach who pushed me off the cliff. Thank goodness. So if this feels scary, good, that's normal. But don't let your own fear keep you from having a full bank account. Let me sum up this portion of today's episode. Raise your rates as soon as your client results justify it. Okay, next question you might have for me is how much, Tiffany, how much do I raise my rates? And this is a difficult question to answer because every single one of you listening will have a very uniquely different story and offer, but let's start here, okay? Inflation is expected to continue to ease a little bit, but in 2024, we're expected, again, expected to see about a 2.5% increase by the end of the year. That's from a Kiplinger special report for key business costs for 2024. Here's another bookmark we or benchmark we can study. Social Security and Supplemental Security Income, they, uh, they'll put out how much they're going to increase that every year. And they're forecasting that they're going to increase their benefits to 71-ish million Americans by 3.2% in 2024. So if we use that data as a starting point, 2.5%, 3.2%, just cost of living increase, I would suggest that you increase your rates at least 3 to 4% minimum, minimum. But if you provide a service that is $1,000 or more, meaning it's a little bit more of a 